morning all it's freezing well to me it is it's like 40 degrees might be 38 and the other more other morning I did a walk through on my garden just because it was so cold and wet which it still is and so many people asked me to go through Gary's I know he's doing one on his bananas so let's walk down to his garden I just don't go down there I've got so much to do on my own Just a quick note that's never been talked about. See this? I'm going to have to mention this. It's something we never said. He built this stairway. This was a mountain. And he got all these blocks. A lot of them were already on the property. A lot of them he finds people throw out in the streets. He'll come home with one here, one there. And he dug this whole thing out. And this rail, that was trash he found. He built this handrail. So I can hold on, he said. And he, yeah, he built the whole thing and then he built another part of the stairs too. So we're on our way down and I have to stop. I have to show you. Oh, let me see if I can get my shadow out of here. There's one of his dishwashers and he's got a zube growing in it, which is still green. Look at this. Still green, but it's dying back. Oh, it's got a lot of leaves on it actually. Okay. Never died this winter because we were warm until now. But look at his pepper, the baby bells. I gave him some baby bells I planted. And look, it's just full in the middle of winter. It's been so cold. Mine have kind of become really spindly and the leaves all died back, but not his in here. Now the reason is what I talked about in my video the other day, microclimate. It's growing up, this plant, into the elephant food. And with the elephant food here in the situation it's in, it must be staying just warm enough at the roots in the whole area here for it to continue to grow because all the others have died back. They're just stumps. Look at, there's more down there. I don't know if you can see that. But it's just growing into the elephant food. Let me step back. Again, try to get my shadow out here. It's real early in the morning. It's like 7 o'clock. And look at that. It's growing beautiful. Okay, let's go down. There's a peek at his banana. Let's go on down. But I want you to see this still. These are those dishwashers he set up. And he continues to find dishwashers. I didn't realize they all have baby bells or bell peppers growing. Look at that. He's got more peppers growing here. And in winter, look at that. They are flowering. So there's bell peppers everywhere. No wonder when I tell him, oh, I'm out of bell peppers. He comes running with bell peppers. Okay, let's go on down and see his garden. Again, he built this whole path and these stairs and these gates. And he built these stairs too, same thing. Picked up rails and stuff he found thrown out on the side of the road. And we're going down. Rails so the old lady can hang on. I don't use them. Let's see. I thought he was down here. Oh, look, there he is. Okay, let's see what he's doing over here. He's, he's the king of his mountain of wood chips. So what's going on here? Well, I've created a microclimate where it frosts. Oh, it's frozen on, I don't believe it's frozen. I'm freezing. So there's, you can't really see it, can you? Well, you can in the center. See on the north side? <clears throat> see, this is frost. Well, it's not, it was frost. It's starting to melt oh. now. But on the north side, it's frosted. On the south side, it's not. 
Wow, so the sun's coming up now. It's, melt, it's starting to melt the frost. But the trees have created an area where the air's not moving. And Look at that. See, that piece is facing north. That piece is facing south. This has frost on it. This doesn't. Oh, yeah, so the white. I see I'm going to pan down, and I see it's all white in here. So that's all frost. This is usually when I'm hiding. Oh, this is all frost. This is all yeah. white. It's trapped in, in still air. Frost will, frost, frost will form in still air. Well, we shouldn't have frost in That's California. That's why the citrus growers up north use those giant fans to move the air. Well, this is a good view to your garden, though. Everybody wants to see your garden. Why don't you run in there to your bananas? And I can show you your bananas, but this is a good view. Well, you know what? While I'm standing here, you've got the apple trees starting. I see. I think I see an apple on one. It doesn't matter. I'm not hiking all the way. I'm going to just do the garden. Uh, okay, I see it. I think I see an apple on one. And then you've got apple trees. You've got papayas here. What is this one? Another apple tree? Yeah, these are apples along here. It's got blackberries. Over there. Blackberries. Got an asparagus. Okay, we're not doing a full garden tour, just a morning tour. It's too freezing. See, this is where my garden is. It's up there. And I've got to hike down either this way or there is another way to hike down, down a long road, which I actually like. It's a nice trail. That's where the deer come through. Okay, let's go in. Macadamia nuts over there, too. Behind you. Oh, there's a macadamia nut. Yeah, I'm now shooting into the sun, sorry, because the sun is just coming up. Oh, look at that. But his garden's doing good. Again, this is winter, so we're not really planning extra, kind of left everything that was growing. I see walking onions down there. I see garlic chives down there. What do you call those? Cannas? Cannas have started again, yeah. Oh, they're new. Oh, that's why they're little. Now, of course, this is all this different types of sweet potatoes that are growing all winter and asparagus in here. And you've got kale in here. Oh, my goodness. Your, your Japanese mustard did great. Yeah. Scaring Mine bolted and went to seed right away. That's beautiful. And you got more, I guess, down there. Now that's ro rocket. That's self sign rocket. Oh, that's rocket. Okay. And there's no more rabbits in here? No more rabbits. Of course, the rabbits off. I left the gate open, so. That fig tree didn't go dormant. Actually, it's got a little fig on it. <sighs> See, forming up there. Fig trees are so, but we don't even know what kind of fig tree this is. No, this is one of your seedlings. Oh, so it could it be good or it could be bad. It didn't produce fruit last I'm year. I'm doing only cuttings right now off the strawberry fig that we've got and then the other figs. Okay. So here's, here's a refrigerator he found on the street and made into a planter. Of course, all this bricks, the cinder blocks. And then somebody gave him an old pool, um, pond. He wants to either put the pond in or plant in it. He hasn't decided. The pond is going here. Oh, okay. I'm going to clear this out, bring in some more clay. I've got turmeric to harvest. Oh, you should be harvesting it. And I believe that's yellow turmeric. I'll remove the sweet potatoes and I'll set the pond here. Uh, the Frog se breeding season's already started. I missed the boat on that because I hear them at night. But I want to set this up and that will increase the microclimate temperature here too. Well, I've got to get out here at night with the camera and see if I can pick that up. That's amazing with all the frogs calling. I love that sound. The ubes that are further in are still growing. The ones on the outside have died, died back, and they're protecting the bananas too. So this is a warmer microclimate than 20 feet from here. Okay, now I can feel it. I'm warm in here and walking down and around the outside. It was freezing and there was 
ice on the ground, frost, and here it is not. But here's his bananas. Some of the leaves look a little bit sad because they did get frozen. See, when you get further up, the wind caught that one. Plus, it's an older leaf. Oh, that plant's going to die. No, it's not. It will when the um, bananas are done. Bananas. That's what I mean. Yeah. It's The bananas are going to get ripe, and then this poor plant will die, and all the babies will grow. Such a sad cycle of life. Yeah, the, the cold will make, make them turn a little yellow here, but I don't believe it's going to we had some freezing days so it does a lot of damage to different trees even avocado trees will do that they'll look good for a couple days and then their leaves will get brown and fall off but they'll come back now the one that's down on the ground you've already har oh you did not harvest did you harvest this no. one no i've harvested four from this one so we've had four bunches recently yeah, from this I'm one. I'm still not sure exactly what variety that is. But this one's the gold finger. And this grows a lot different. And that's just a lot of fruit. It's going to um, produce. But this has got two bunches of fruit on it. There's another bunch there. And they've kept growing over winter so far. But with the cold weather, if, we, if that stays, then they'll just shut down for a while until it starts to warm up again. Now, is it okay to be on the ground like that or will rats get them? I guess I'm not going to yeah, eat we, them. We haven't green. had any problems with rats. So I've harvested another bunch that was on the ground and so far it's, it's good. So they should get a little bit bigger. The ones that I have been harvesting are fingerlings and this is definitely different to that plant there. I thought it was the same variety, but obviously it's not. Well, you bought some varieties that weren't even labeled. And I remember Home Depot gave you one because yeah, they didn't well, know what it was. Well, that was labeled as a gold finger, but I'm starting to think it's something else. Something else good or something else well, bad? Well, it, it is good. Okay. Every banana is <laughs> good, but it's got a slight apple flavor, so it may be a manzano. But I haven't had a, I haven't seen a Manzano fruit, so I'm not sure what they look like. I'll have to find a grocery store that may sell a variety of bananas. Look at all the babies coming up. Now you could separate them if you want, right? Yeah, I've, I should to help with the fruiting. Oh, they're coming all through there, a whole bunch. I haven't decided yet which variety I want to grow more of, so I, I left them. But come springtime, I will chop some of these back and harvest the pups and move them. When you start looking around, yeah, there's like 20, 30 plants. This is one plant, right? Yeah. Correct? One, one stool underneath. One okay, form. you've got like tiny ones, big ones. There's like 20 or 30 of them in there. Yeah, this is a very productive plant. It produces, it's, produces a lot of pups. This one here doesn't pr produce quite as many. So the growth habit is different. That's, what, that's why I'm thinking they're two different varieties. Although this was labeled as a gold finger too. So they may have switched the labels at some point. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I'm just looking at the pups on the bottom. They're coming up in between on the side, everywhere. Little ones, big ones, all sizes. What am I stepping on? Is this an olive tree? No, this is an acacia. Oh, you didn't plant this, it just came up? No, it came up from seed. That's any beneficial, brings the birds, the birds like that yeah, one. And Yeah, and it's an, the birds like it, it produces a nice little black seed, plus it's a nitrogen fixer. Oh. Then. So I haven't bothered with it, I might shape it a little more. It'll only grow to maybe three foot tall. I, I could trim it down to whatever size I want, if I even want it there. Yeah, I was just wondering because it was here. Let me see if I can walk in a little bit. Because people like your bananas. So do I. I should just come under here, have a cup of coffee, plop a chair here and just sit. And the Oreos. I've saw, seen my first Oreos. I know they love your banana trees because they come in here and they nest in the leaves. We've got videos on that. Go back and try to find it. It's, Or I'll put a card or, or attach it to this one because it's amazing. They get in there 
and they weave the leaves together and up the, of course, the ones up on top. And they weave the leaves together and then they nest in there and have their babies inside the banana leaf. So if it rains, the banana leaf is their roof. And this is all sweet potatoes still growing here. No, I, I was actually just zooming in on the bananas because they fascinate me. The sugar cane is done. Now, will they come back or you have to plant more? Yeah, they'll come back. They come back. Okay, we've got more wood chips there. All right, well, like I said, we're winter, so he hasn't really, we haven't really planted anything except we bought some of the stuff from CPG that uh, we shouldn't have. We should have waited. But his Japanese cabbage came out really good. That, that one's growing really good in his garden. And he's got tree collard. And these are potatoes? Yeah, these are potatoes. They're doing better now. The roly-poly numbers are down. Look at the Swiss chard over there. We've got oats. This is a dill stalk I put in. And I've got dill coming up everywhere. It's self-sown. Okay, I think I missed that. That's, oh, that's a dill that's stock. Dill, yes. The stock that From was left. Garden. Oh, you pulled this out of my garden, so now yeah. it's self-seeding itself all over. Wow, that's cool. Yep. Okay, so that's all dill. Dill, onion, self-sown. I'm trying to get a video together on this. I'm trying to make time to do it. But I've got rocket coming up everywhere for arugula. You know, I try to take a leaf every day. I, got, I have that growing in my garden and eat it. I've heard it's got such benefits, health benefits. And I didn't like it at first, but now I actually like it. But my idea with the tree collards is I'll make a bit of a hedge along there. Oh, that's a good idea. And they last for many, many years. That would be really nice. The tree collards would get really big. I've covered mine because the rabbits in my yard attacked them, so now they're trying to make a comeback. I don't want to step on anything here. But I see you've got Swiss chard coming up too. Oh, you've got red yes. and green. I've got re red and green Swiss chard coming up. Again, nothing planted, nothing tried. Just it's doing it all on its own now. This is beautiful. I've got a plant too, the one in the truck bed now that's probably over two years old and it's beautiful. And these are leeks. Yeah, those are leeks. Okay, I am missing out. When I'm making dinner, I've got to come down here and, and pick more from your garden because you've got stuff that I don't have. I don't have any leeks. My pepinos are doing well. I grew those from seed. And those are called what again? Pepinos. They're related to tomatoes. But they don't look like a tomato, right? No, they look um, more like the uh, other plant I'm trying to think of. Eggplant? Not eggplant. Go goji berries. I've got goji berries in here too. That's that's a pepino, and the goji berry is down there. It's got a smaller leaf. If you turn around, you'll... I'm trying not to swing the camera too hard and fast, which I have a tendency of doing. Because while I'm, I'm doing it, it looks sure. good. When I look back, it's like, oh boy. I'm pretty sure this is a pepino, because it doesn't have such a large leaf. Where well, that's got larger leaves. So this is a pepino also? Um, a goji berry, I okay. should say. <clears throat> <clears throat> it's cold down here. I believe this is a goji berry. Okay, so that's a goji berry, and the oh, the leaf is similar. Let me step over yeah. without stepping on any of the babies that are trying to grow. Okay, so this one is goji berry, and the one down there with the longer leaf. Yeah, and it's is, a smoother leaf too. Leaf texture is different. Something's flowering here. What's flowering? A purple flower, or is that? Yeah, that will be. Yeah, that's... Uh, it's right there, on, be on the other side. Yeah, I believe that's a goji berry flower. Oh, cool. Yeah, I've got to come down here more often. Because I've mixed them in, <laughs> I'm not 100% <laughs> on that. You got microclimates all over in here, all different ones. You've got like now where I'm standing now is kind of cold, and where we were standing by the bananas, it actually felt warm. Now 
Now, you've got kale. Kale, yeah. Dinosaur kale? Yeah, dinosaur kale. See, I didn't even know you had dinosaur kale down here. And the red Swiss chard. I like the red Swiss chard. I actually, personally, to just have it slightly steamed, I like the green better. But either one is fine. It's just personal preference. The green is better to eat raw. Oh, okay. Artichoke. I, I put baskets around these before I had the rabbits fenced out completely. So they don't need the baskets anymore. Because rabbits will just, just demolish it. Oh, that's one of my old celeries you took. Yeah. Yeah. That, which is good because it will come back really green once it, the roots take hold. And then it'll go to seed and then you'll have millions and millions of celery. Which is kind of good. You'll get some of the critters eating the baby celery and leaving everything else alone. Well, that's cool. I think you've got radish here. What is this with the white flowers? Oh, this is arugula or rocket. Oh, that's rocket also. Yeah, okay, I've I looked at the in, leaves on the bottom. You're right. I've got it in four stages. I planted this a few years ago. So it's this one's flowering. It's got seed pods on it. And I've got some a little further along that's just grown up in the ground. And then I've got some that are just starting to grow. Wow. Now, these stalks, you just stuck them in here to let them yeah, self-seed. Self-seed. These, I've got some of this. I've got a um, video and I'm trying to get together, but this is the popolo. And that's just... Oh, okay. These are the ones that came off the deck. Yep. Wait a minute. One came off the deck and one came out of my garden, right? Yeah. I remember that. I told you to get them out of here. All because it, when my garden, the popolo babies get, all get eaten. I have to cover them with a netting. Once they get about a couple inches tall, then nothing likes them anymore. But in the beginning, they must taste really good when they first come up. That's cool. So they'll fall right here. Yeah, and hopefully some of them will grow when the weather gets warm enough. And if they don't, I collected a bunch of seeds. Yeah, this is just instead of composting it or tossing it out, I, I just want to let it self seed. What you could do, and I do, is I sometimes grab a handful and walk across somewhere else in my garden and drop it, which is probably bad because then later things are coming up and it's like, I don't remember doing that, or did I? <laughs> well, the, the, the popolo here, if something grows up here, I'll be able to recognize it pretty much as popolo. The celery, this is a celery stem I stuck in the ground. Wait, wait, show that again. I, okay, so you just take the dried out seed stock and just stick it in the ground and forget about it. Yeah, and if something comes up here, I'll know it will be celery. And I that's, add, go ahead, I'm sorry. I added more clay in this area too. I wanted to build this up. So I just need to bring in more sifted wood chips. Yeah, I was going to say the celery seed is like mustard seed. It's really tiny, so it can blow anywhere in the garden. You'll get stuck to your shoes, even though your shoes may not be muddy, and you'll drag it and somewhere, and you'll have celery growing everywhere. Okay, let me see if I can get out of here. If I'm shaking the camera, I am sorry. I can't see what I'm doing, so the sun is kind of glaring at me, so I'm doing the best I can, everybody. I do a lot of raw footage stuff. I just go out there and talk, and that's why I throw my videos up quick. If I misspeak, oh well, I'm human. Gary likes to take his and be a little bit more, I don't want to use the word perfect, but he wants his to be better, plus he wants to do it his way, so everybody's got their way of doing it. But this is the way I can get him on tape right now for you, is drag him out here or go find him. These are the carrots that I planted that were in the refrigerator they started to grow oh the organic purple i bought organic purple orange and yellow carrots and we ate the carrots and we cut the top off i think those are them and then he stuck them in the ground and now we've got seeds yeah, well, wait a minute you didn't collect one. any seeds no i let it fall here and it's growing so these are baby carrots all along here look at that cool yeah, I haven't had a lot of luck with carrots. I've got a, 
I've got to try to grow carrots and I haven't really tried. Now I'm going to have to make that one of my things. I want to grow carrots and beets. Beets are good for you. I like beets. I didn't, but I do now. So is that pretty much it? Yeah, that's pretty much it. The cactus, if they can they grow fruit? Oh, see, and I've got the sun in there. Let me see. I'm afraid to walk through here because I'm going to accidentally step on the baby carrots that are growing. Let's see where I can go without murdering. Oops, this is killing anything in this garden. <laughs> uh, pretty much everything's growing something somewhere. Let's see if I can walk through. Yeah, this is a thornless prickly pear. It hasn't produced, it's flowered a couple of times, but it hasn't produced any fruit yet. So I'm not sure whether it is a fruiting variety or you just use the leaves. It should be a fruiting variety. So this is the one our friend gave us in that tiny little pot. Yeah. Okay, he's not in the food, so he probably just bought it at the, you know, at a nursery because he liked it. So we'll just have to wait and see, but it's pretty. Yeah. You could eat the pads if worse came to worse, yeah, correct? Yeah, you can eat the pads. Our neighbors eat the pads. Okay. So in, the I see him out there cleaning. Sometimes he picks the pads. He's cleaning off the spikes and putting it on the barbecue. Is he burning the spikes off his barbecue, or what is he doing when he's barbecue? Or is he eating it? He might. I'm not sure. He might, he prob that probably burns the spikes off. And these, even though they're thornless, they still have a few that will get you. So especially along the edges. It's a pretty plant. All right. Well, I'm going to go back in and get a cup of coffee. I came out early before I did that. I wanted to catch the frost on the wood chips, which is really cool. And what you'll have to do one day, and I know other people have asked, is see if any of the ubes are ready to pick any of them and just do one on showing digging it up because we haven't even dug any up. I do know one of mine in the containers I looked that was skin before, it grew off a of skin, is now a tuber about the size of your thumb. So I guess it takes time to grow. Yeah. And I left it because I know it's going to come back. But there's Gary's garden. I'll have him wave goodbye. In his expensive morning scarf he's wearing. Look at that yeah. scarf. Look at that beauty. I got it the 99 cent store for a quarter. Last winter, they blew everything out for four dollar, and I bought a whole bunch. Basically, throw away. It gets dirty, you can throw it away. He got has one, good scarves I've too. Got one more banana. I keep forgetting about. Oh, you want to show one more banana? Okay, we're not leaving yet because sometimes I can't find him down here. You would think we're home all day and we see each other all day, and we're both doing our own thing. Sometimes I don't see him for many, many hours. Okay. This is my plantain. Now it's been affected by the cold more than the other varieties because the other varieties are cool weather bananas. So if you want to get bananas try to, and you're in a marginal zone, try to get a cool weather banana. So this is more tropical? This is more tropical. They do produce in sunset zone 22 and 23. We're in sunset zone 23. The guy I got it from is sunset zone 22 and he he likes these more than regular bananas. He, he lets them ripen on the plant and they're really su supposed to be really syrupy. But these are cooking bananas. Oh, cooking ones. Okay, so this is not produced yet. It hasn't produced yet. I'm thinking it's going to produce this year. It's slowed down a little more than the others because of the cold. Um, even the 50 degree nighttime temperatures have slowed it down a bit. But this is frost affected, or well, not frost, but cold, cold affected. I can tell by the look of the leaves. So this is a very tropical plant. It probably should not drop below 40 like we have. Maybe not even below 50, I don't know. But this is the one he brought over just a couple years ago as a little tiny plant, right? Yeah, it was like the size of this. Plant. Okay, I remember it was one of the wood chip truck drivers yeah. saw your garden and loved it and brought you over. Something. So it was that size just two years ago. No, last year. I oh, this is last, last year's year. plant. Yep. In one year, this thing got this big? Wow, I didn't, oh, that, time flies. Okay, so it's only one year. Yeah, so it was this plant and this, well, this this and this is what he brought over 
at that side. Did at you that, give that size? Did you give him some banana plants? I think you I traded them. I gave him some purple sweet potatoes. Okay, so you guys traded. That yep. was cool. All right. Well, you're making. I know you're putting a whole video together on bananas, right? Yeah, I am. But we always start at the other end, and we don't get to it. the one that I'm really looking forward to is the plantain. We always forget about it because it's on the end. Okay, well, we didn't forget about it now. But, you know, even though it's it got damaged, as soon as we get through this cold weather, I'm sure it will come back. Just, you know, the trunk looks really good, won't it's, it? It's going to come back without a problem. It's just, it's kind of slightly affected. But the babies underneath, you can clearly see the babies are fine because they're closer to the ground and it's warmer where they are. Like I said, this area here up against the wall, I'm going to pan over and show the wall. I can stand here and I'm not cold. Or every time I walk somewhere else and I'm cold. So the babies are protected. Yes, the babies are protected. And, and this area, this is where the deepest wood chips are. This is about two foot deep. So it froze on, basically got too cold on the top. Let me ask you something because I know nothing about bananas. Do you know, are you supposed to trim the bottom leaves off or just let them do their thing? You can, you can if you want to. I, I prefer to just chop them and drop them for mulch, but I've left the leaves, well I trimmed these leaves when it was warmer weather. So right now I'm leaving the leaves to maybe help protect the trunk a little bit. So it's like it's wearing a sweater. <laughs> it's yeah, like it's wearing a sweater. A sweater or a coat, it's protecting the trunk, that makes sense. It's trapping air around here which will be a little bit warmer if there's a breeze. It'll just sort of protect the trunk a little. Oh, that's a good idea. I yeah, that's true. Okay. Well, now we didn't forget your banana and the bread box. That bread box better not have the cutters that I've been looking for. No, those aren't my cutters. No, okay. <laughs> yes, I picked up some bread boxes at the thrift store and they work out really good to put your garden tools in. Are they perfect? No, but you get into a habit of putting it somewhere and you'll know where it is. Of course, I'm missing my good one. Probably buried under wood chip somewhere. Either that or a coyote ran off with it. Or I put it in a really safe place and it's sitting someplace in a really safe place. Oh, so you, you, you're These using... Are banana scissors, yeah. You can cut bananas with scissors, not a problem. So you cut the brown parts off, the parts you don't want? Yeah, well, yeah I, if I wanted to remove a leaf, I can just trim a leaf off. No, don't trim it off. Well, this one down here. Let's see. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Let me get in here. I want to show how he trims off his... Yeah, that's not doing anything. I just chop. Okay, now you've got mulch on the ground for the bananas. Yeah. Look at all the babies coming up. It's amazing. So last year he brings you two little ones, and now you've got more little ones. Look at that. Look how big they are. So some of these are babies too. This one here yeah, this, is still... This is a baby? That's the, that's the first pup, and then I've got a couple more here. That's amazing. And because I like this variety, I'm going to continue along. But this is a cooking variety. You can't just sit down, eat it, and make ice cream out of it. Well, according to the guy that gave it to me, you can eat it. Oh, you can eat it? Yeah, he just eats it raw. Yeah, but... He lets them ripen and eat it, eats it raw. Hopefully but they're, they're more starchy. They're better for cooking. Okay, so with that, I'm looking up at the stock there, and he's trimming his bananas. So I'm going to take off now, get into a warmer house. So don't forget to eat. I made your walkthrough now. People have been asking. Yeah. It's not a walkthrough. It's just a quick morning tour in the frost, in the cold, and I'm ready to move to Hawaii. It's better get warm soon. So everybody, have a great day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye.